So, if there's nothing detectable in the pills and clinical trials don't show any effect, why would people keep taking homeopathic medicines? And critics ask, why should the Scottish NHS keep paying for them? This is the Glasgow Homeopathic Hospital, a two-and-a-half million pound NHS-funded building. I met two patients. Janice has suffered from chronic bone pain for 15 years. And Alison was diagnosed with MS 14 years ago. They're typical of patients here, people with long-term chronic and debilitating illnesses. Patients referred to the hospital start with a homeopathic consultation, an hour-long discussion completely unlike a mainstream medical consultation. We spoke for an hour. He didn't examine me. He didn't necessarily ask me about my pain, you know, singularly. Um, he spoke to me as a person, holistically. I said to him at the end as I was leaving, I said, so, so how, do, how do you think I'm doing? And he says, I think you're doing very well. And that was all I needed. That was great. He got me and how... 14 years down the line, I felt for the really for the first time that I could understand what was happening to me. Well, he did. I did give me some remedy that day. I have no idea what it was, but I did feel. I just felt the whole experience, and it's just a lovely building and a lovely place to come. With it lifted. Don't know how. Don't know why. Just the whole being able to sit and talk to someone. Having spent some time now at the hospital and listened to some of the patients' stories, what's interesting is the homeopathic remedies, which I thought would be a big part of their journeys, seem to be actually much smaller. And what the patients tell me is the biggest difference is the time that the doctors take in talking to them and the quality of the discussions that they have. Their doctor is Bob Leckridge, one of the consultants of the hospital. You know, I don't think homeopathy as a method would be at all controversial if we didn't actually use the medicines that we use. Now that might sound a strange thing to say, but actually in, if I have an hour with a patient, probably 55 minutes is spent trying to understand that person and trying to help them gain a different understanding of themselves. But I think by the time they leave the room, the most of the work is already being done. So I think the small part of the homeopathic method is the giving of these rather strange little homeopathic medicines. That sounds, well, nice. The idea that a doctor simply taking an interest could cure long-term conditions. But there is a scientific explanation. Whatever floats your boat may also cure your illness. It's called the placebo effect. And this is one of the most fascinating areas of the whole of medicine because we know that people get better when they're given completely inert dummy sugar pills that look like real medication. And we know this because there are lots of studies comparing one kind of placebo against another. So we know, for example, that Two sugar pills are better than one sugar pill a day at clearing gastric ulcers, and that's an outrageous finding in some respects. We know that the colour of pills has a huge impact on how much um, uh, relief somebody gets from medication. So the placebo effect is generated by our own expectations. People get better when they're taking an inert dummy sugar pill which is designed to look like a real medicine. And that's not because the sugar pill has an effect, it's because it, it manipulates our beliefs and expectations and helps us to get better in ourselves. So maybe homeopathy works by making patients just feel better. But there's an inpatient ward here, nurses and a purpose-built facility. The running costs are at least £1.2 million. That's almost a third of the total spend on homeopathic care for the entire UK, at a time when the health service is facing deep cuts. Elsewhere in the UK, where cuts are already biting, the NHS has restricted funding for homeopathy. There's no better example of that than here in the Garden of England. 
Kent. Well, this is a back view of the hospital, as it were. Oh, right. This is Dr. David Ratsey. He used to be the head consultant at the homeopathic hospital here. He has to peer over the fence because his department was shut down over a year ago. And don't let the signs fool you. This hospital is now no longer doing any homeopathy at all. He says that's because of a prejudice against his discipline. The conventional establishment on the whole has great difficulty with the science. Um, it's very difficult to explain homeopathy in terms of conventional science. In fact, I'm not sure that you can. The homeopathic hospital was shut down because the local primary care trust West Kent pulled the funding. The trust felt that because there wasn't evidence to back up homeopathy, it couldn't justify spending on it. But critics point out that it only saved £200,000 from a total budget of one billion. But two to three hundred thousand pounds, you can get a lot of health care with that. That's a GP surgery, it's a large number of hip replacements. You know, it's not something that you can ignore. You know, that it's not the pennies, we're talking about pounds here in a very serious way. But it does still seem a small saving. So is it really about a campaign against homeopathy? There is an ideological campaign against homeopathy. It's based on the notion that homeopathy has no legitimate evidence base and that we should not commission services in the NHS that do, do not possess such a base. In those terms, there is an ideological campaign and it is a highly legitimate one. So Tunbridge Wells is now without a homeopathic hospital. Hospitals in Liverpool and Bristol have also been downgraded or shut, leaving just London and Glasgow as fully-fledged homeopathic institutions. The belief that homeopathy is nothing more than water is now the official view of the BMA. It's been at the forefront of a successful campaign in England to stop NHS money being spent on homeopathy. And now the most powerful lobby in British healthcare is targeting Scotland. Are you saying we should lose the funding of the homeopathic hospital in Glasgow? That should stop? The funding of the homeopathic hospital should stop until and unless they can prove an evidence base to say which patients they are going to be able to help and where that help is more than the placebo effect. I can understand and well imagine how devastated the patients will be. If there is no evidence but they're being told that there is evidence, then the question is what is actually happening to those patients? Are they really having a proper choice? The hospital is just part of the issue. Half of Scotland's health boards fund homeopathy. We wanted to ask the Scottish Government about the issues raised by the BMA and others, but it refused an interview, saying it was a matter for individual health boards. But it's worth noting that in 2005, both the Health Secretary Nicola Sturgeon and her deputy Shona Robeson signed a motion backing NHS funding for homeopathy. If homeopaths are wrong about their theories and the remedies are just water, then at least they're harmless. But in our investigation, we've come across some behavior by homeopaths which conventional doctors say is worrying. Remember Sarah Ma? She told me about a patient with advanced bladder cancer who asked her to treat him homeopathically. She had reservations, but decided to try. What were you injecting this man with? I gave him Iscador, which is a preparation um, given in injectable form of mistletoe. If anybody asked you what cured this man's cancer, you have absolutely no doubt that it was the homeopathic remedy that you gave him. Now I'm talking about 15 years ago. Any tumour would have returned by then if there wasn't a cure. The boy is fine. He's great, 100% well. You put that down solely to the homeopathic remedy? I do, definitely. Which cured his cancer? Yes, definitely. No doubt about it. A cure for cancer is one of the golden bullets of medicine. It's something everyone's aspiring to. I have seen nothing anywhere in any research trial that says that homeopathy is able to do that. 
Dr. Maher is well aware her claims won't be believed by conventional doctors. I talked about this at a postgraduate course in the Royal Alexander Infirmary, which was for doctors. I told them, and um, nobody came up to ask me afterwards about it. They must have thought I was telling porkies, but that was the truth. Could patients being treated by homeopaths actually be putting themselves at risk? We heard about practitioners who said they could replace vaccinations against life-threatening diseases with a homeopathic alternative. That led us to a small organization, the Homeopathic Medical Association. We asked its members about the possibility of replacing the MMR vaccine, which protects a child against measles, mumps and rubella, with a homeopathic alternative. Now, three out of its six members in Scotland said they'd done this in the past and would quite happily do it again. The government, doctors and the largest organisations representing homeopaths all say this would put children at risk. I went to meet one of those homeopaths, Katie Jarvis, who's based in Inverness. Just what was she offering to patients? Do you come in? The alternative that I would offer would be a homeopathic remedy made from diseased tissue that comes from someone with that disease and then made into potentized form. Uh, so that's then given uh, in a homeopathic remedy. So would that be instead of the MMR vaccine? It can be given instead or as well as um, the vaccination. Katie Jarvis says she only gives these alternatives when parents ask for them, but that's still against the policy of the largest organisations representing homeopaths. I'm not advocating that they do not take the vaccination. I'm providing support for those who choose not to by giving them an alternative. Do you think that giving those three remedies are as safe and offer the same protection as the MMR vaccine? I would like to say that they were safer, but I can't prove that. And it's not just the MMR vaccine which Katie Jarvis says she can replace. No, there's other vaccinations that I can offer too, um, like tetanus and polio and diphtheria, um, influenza. And I take the influenza one each winter myself and haven't contracted flu. So instead of having the flu jab, yeah. you would take the remedy? I would take the remedy, yes. Homeopathic alternatives to vaccines would be seen by conventional medicine as the dangerous end of homeopathy. Replacing proven vaccines, tested vaccines, vaccines that are used globally and we know are effective, with homeopathic um, alternatives where there is no evidence of efficacy, no evidence of effectiveness, is extremely worrying because it could persuade families that their children are safe and protected when they're not. Uh, and some of those children will go on to get the illness and some of those children may go on to get the permanent, life-threatening sequelae of that illness or even to die. And that's a tragedy when the family think they've protected their children.